Hi, good morning. My name is Lisa. Welcome to King Worldwide. This is my dad, Roy. Hello, everybody. And we are getting going to continue on Expectation, the series of The Authentic Believer and Strong Belief Expectation, the power of expectation. Okay, in our last broadcast, we highlighted the difference between natural expectation based on external events, circumstances, our job, work, people, versus a kind of ex expectation that comes from having faith in God and His Word. Correct. Now, that was the, the first step of four, and we called it faith produces expectation, but more specifically, faith in God and His Word produces pure expectation. Now, we must understand that we are the only one, this is a great statement, we, we must understand that we are the only one that can stop God's plan for us. Jeremiah, so freeing to Je know this. Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about is that God's got a plan for us. So you and us, we are the only ones that can stop God's plan that he established with us, for us, before the foundation world. We're the only one that can stop it. Not circumstances, nope. not background, not heritage, not race, not skin color, not um, economic background. It's our mouth, our words, our mind, right? Yep. We're, we're in control. Now, why is that? is because God pre-designed us before the foundation of the world in the same mold and image of his son. And we were born anew when he raised Jesus from the dead and when we made him Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Now, here are a few scriptures that are going to tie all this together. I'm going this way to this way. Go, go this way to whatever you want to go. Okay, Romans 8, 29, New King James Version. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Here we go with 1 Peter 1, 3. This is the New King James Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we have Romans 8, 2 from NLT. That references my past periscope. Right. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you, us, from the power of sin that leads to death. And the final one of this point, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 from the NLT. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. The old life being unrighteousness and the new life being righteousness. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So the, if you'll kind of follow the flow here, and, and that is that God, one, God pre-designed us before the foundation of the world in the same mold and image of his son, Jesus. We're pre-designed right in line with the likeness, attributes, etc. of Jesus. Can we go over pre-design? We are created, formed, yeah. imagined. This and everything, everything lined up with God's thoughts. So therefore his thoughts became a reality yes. in time. So everything we were preformed, pre we were designed, in, created. Yeah, in, in the mind. All right. Yes. His so, mind. So that was the first step. Then the second step is that Adam fell. So when he fell he turned everything over to Satan, and Satan is, is the god of this world. And so, therefore, uh, we were in a pickle because we were destined to be there unless somebody came and redeemed us from it. Reversed the problem. All right. Legally got us back where we were from the beginning. And so that is exactly what happened when Jesus came. Jesus. Is that when he was raised from the dead is that, if you will, that opened up the gateway for us to become the righteousness of God. And then the third step is that when we accepted Jesus, our Lord and Savior, ding, 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 we became the righteousness of God, which means that we have the power, the authority, the rights, the privileges, and the freedoms of the anointed Jesus. 
Now, now that we have been restored to our original identity, we can move forward in life to please God by developing our faith. So how do we do that? Listen to this scripture. Hebrews 11:6, the New King James Version. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have to realize, we have to grasp, discover, take it for ourselves, choose to believe. It's a faith choice. See, I like, the, I like both all of that, the first part and the second part, but the, but the second part is that God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So that means that we're, we're kind of in the right groove, so to speak. Yes. As we diligently seek God and, and feed on his word, our belief gets stronger and stronger. Then our expectation increases. And this expectation, fortified by faith, produces joy. So what happens in life is that, the, let me say this, joy doesn't come from external events or circumstances or people or a job or whatnot. Happiness might, but that joy, that joy is from God and his word. And here's, here's the difference, is that if that stuff, the external circumstances and all that that I just talked about, if that leaves, kind of like the happiness leaves. But, but Jesus and the Father are always with us, so therefore that joy True. is always with us and it doesn't wane unless we allow it to. Amen. So, if joy wanes, what do we do? We reignite our believing yes. and develop it to the point where we are fully persuaded that God can do what he said he would do. Yes. Last scripture for today. 1 Peter 1, 8 from the NLT. You love him, God, even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him, now you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy because it's a knowing inside. He changed us. Now, no. Is that what you were saying? That's exactly right. Okay. All right. Now, we can, we can feed on the word. We can develop our faith. And a lot of people think that if when we do that, that, we, that we're, we're growing in our spiritual walk. That can be true. However... There's a very common obstacle that we all uh, are encounter, encounter in life, and that can dilute the power and the strength of us developing our faith. And Lisa's going to talk about it. It's simply the contamination of the natural world. A simple, simple example. Find a celebrity, and I'm not talking about anyone in particular, celebrity, um, public figure. Look at their Twitter or any type of social media and you can see lots and lots of followers go to people that are have been separate holy unto God and you might see a lot less followers it, it, we're not talking about followers but my point is contamination of natural things you can be a Christian and still be in the world but there will be blockages and that is what happened to both of our lives and that was the big uh, ding 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 that God showed me about eight years ago that if you want to live unto me, like you say, and you want to know my voice by saying in the word, yeah, you can give a tithe of your time to me and my word. And I did. With that, I had no other time for anything else. But by giving him two and a half hours a day, it was enough to show me that I am not going to have time to think and live like the world and relate with the world. Like, it does it didn't it wouldn't do me any good if I would be doing social media things all day to get people to follow so that I can keep them interested. That's a natural thing. Yeah, that's good example. Um living separate unto God is what holiness is. It doesn't mean we're we're so high and mighty. It means I'm gonna be separate unto God regardless what anyone else does. Separate unto God does not talk like the world. Separate unto God does not do what the world does, does not try to grab the world. Separate unto God means you go full steam ahead with what God tells us to do, and you block contamination, and you, you only fellowship with those that are doing the same. And if there's nobody doing that, then you do that full steam ahead until God brings you people, and he will. 
And you know, we all experience challenges in life, and, and here's something that uh, I refer to quite a bit it, uh, as I go through these challenges in life, and that is, it, 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 it makes me, I, I'm reminded of the example of the fig tree in uh, Matthew 11, I mean in Mark 11. And Jesus and the disciples, what they were doing is they were going from Bethany to Jerusalem. And Jesus was hungry, and so he looked over uh, over the fig tree. He walked over to it, and, and there was no fruit on it. The trick. And he said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Now, here's the point I want to make, is that at that particular moment, the fig tree, the roots of it, started to die. At that moment. And the point I want to emphasize is that God's Word is more powerful than anything that takes place in the natural Amen. world. It's more powerful. And oftentimes when we pray for something, we don't, we don't see the evidence of it manifesting. But we've got, we've got to remember, this is what I want, I want to emphasize. His Word is more powerful is that if He said to that fig tree at that moment, that fig tree started to die. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what green leaves it had on it. And then the next day, when Jesus and the, and the disciples, they were coming back that way uh, again, they looked over, I think it was Peter looked over and said, Master, the, the, the tree, the fig tree that you spoke to, it is withered up. Well, it initially... They didn't see any withering. Underneath. It was underneath. So the roots or the source of what is creating the challenge, that that is what is attacked with God's word. And the point I want, I, I want to leave you with, because I've done this for me for a, a number of times, is that when I speak to something, there's a challenge. I speak to something, I at that moment believe that God's word is more powerful than the source of that situation and that it has no right to continue and that God's word supersedes it. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Little children, yes. So, so therefore, we, we have control, but oftentimes in the waiting period is that we kind, we kind of vacillate because we don't see the evidence manifested of what we prayed for, but God can't lie, so therefore when we speak his word, it supersedes everything, and we just have to believe it. And if we have a challenge waiting, a good secret is to get more filled up with the word, spend more time in right. the word, commit to more time, because what God will do, he'll bring you more assignments that you get your eyes off yourself and your things, and you'll be doing what he, to allow him to do things in your through you to others, and whatever you are praying for and believing for will already happen, and you'll be doing other things. It's just, it's eyes off self. So, in summary, here are the first two steps, and that is of the power of expectation. Number one is that faith produces expectation. Number two, expectation produces joy, but that expectation has to be pure expectation that is focused on God and his word. Founded in God and his right. word. Okay, glory to God. Way to go. Love that. Amen. Okay, see you soon.